Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be pulling the engine on the S4. And before we even get started on that, we gotta go through a couple quick things we need to keep in mind while we're doing this. So first thing to keep in mind is make sure you order everything that you're gonna need. So go on your phone, tablet, whatever, computer. Uh, make sure you place the order for all the items you're gonna be needing, um, especially single use things like bolts, washers, um, if you're replacing turbos, crush washers, all your gaskets and other things like that. So make sure you get a good list of what you need and make sure to check it twice like Santa and get all your stuff ordered. Another thing to keep in mind is you're gonna need a bunch of these little zip bags as well as a good marker. And the reason you need this is because we use this to label uh, the bolts that we have in here. So you see here, this is coolant res. So these are the bolts or screws that hold down the coolant reservoir. Um, so we need something like this so you can keep track of all the bolts that you took out. So that way you know exactly where they go when you're putting everything back together. Third recommendation or something just again to keep in mind is anything that you go ahead and touch or remove or whatever it be that looks a little complicated to you or you may forget how it goes, make sure you get your phone out or a camera and take a picture of whatever it is you're removing. It makes things a lot easier uh, if you could go through some pictures later, see how everything was set up before you removed it. You'll also see it on video, but that leads us to the last point, which is everyone's car is a little different. Everybody has different mods, different things that they installed and whatever it be. So my engine removal is gonna be a little different than your engine removal. Uh, going from the bumper where I have quick disconnects to intercoolers to see if you have the stock side mounts, upgraded side mounts, a front mount or whatever it be. Everyone's car will be a little different, but this guide will get you on the right track to getting it done correctly. And before we get started, one last thing to mention. So I learned how to do a lot of what I do to my car on YouTube, and I wanna give a huge shout out to Justin Ballou, Ballou, I don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's where I learned how to do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now, and um, he's an awesome resource. I'll link his channel below, as well as his engine removal video. It's great, very detailed. So in case I miss anything, you can check his out. Let's get started. So there's a bunch of different places we can start, but the first thing we're gonna do is jack up the car and drain our oil. Now after we have our oil drained, the next step is to come in and disconnect our battery. My battery is actually in the back, so I went ahead and disconnected that already. Um, and since that's disconnected, we'll go ahead and start removing all the engine plastic. So go ahead and remove your three engine covers if you do have them. The air box is next, so we have the snorkel here, you can pull that off. And then we can pull off the weather stripping here that goes over the battery tray. And then we can remove the rain tray here. Pull that out and we got that removed. After that we'll remove the weather stripping on the radiator support. Then you can go ahead into removing your intake. This is pretty easy so I went ahead and skipped over the step. It should just be a few clamps and remove the box. For the air box we do have this T25 here that we'll go ahead and remove. Make sure you go ahead and put the bolt in a bag and label it so you know exactly where it goes later. Once the bolt's removed, the air box should pop right up. Now we'll continue working on everything that needs to be removed for the engine to come out from left to right. So the first thing here is the positive battery terminal. This runs down to the starter and alternator, so we'll go ahead and pull this so you have a rubber grommet here. We'll go ahead and push from the inside. And as you push, you'll see that grommet starting to slip out and go ahead and just pull the cable out all together. My cable here doesn't have the terminal because my battery is relocated to the back, so this right here is just in a power block. But now that you have that out, your battery is free. So I have this line that runs here, and that comes from the green O2 sensor plug and uh, goes all the way into my O2 gauge. So this is for when I'm logging. Um, unless you're running this exact setup, you really won't have this line here, but if you do, that's something you'll need to cut so that you can go ahead and pull through. And now that's free from that firewall. After that, we have these three lines here. This one's an EVAP line, and then we have our two fuel lines, the in and the return. So we'll go ahead and get started with the EVAP line. This should just be clamped on, either a single use or a worm clamp. If you have a single use, you'll have to break that off. If you have a worm clamp, just simply remove it. Um, and go ahead and pull that off. 
and you can just place this one off to the side. Next you have your fuel return line. This should be held on by a clamp as well. For this one you'll want to get a towel under uh, just in case there's any fuel in the line it doesn't leak all over. So I'll go ahead and just force a towel in there so it'll catch any excess fuel that drips. And this one we should just be able to pull off as well. It may take a little more pressure than that evap line. All right, and we can just put that off to the side as well. Next we have the fuel inline, so the high pressure line. This we'll have to use a 14 and 17 to remove. The 14 will be inside towards the fuel rail and the 17 will be on the outside. The 17 is the one you're going to want to turn. So you're going to turn it counterclockwise to release uh, the line. Make sure you don't put too much pressure on that 14. This is just there to hold it in place. If you do put too much torque behind that 14, you could break your fuel rail, which you really don't want to do. All right, go ahead and remove that. This one again, we have that towel there to catch any extra drips. And this one usually does drip. And what I like to do with these three is just uh, aim them up like this and uh, take a zip tie and then just zip tie them to the back of the firewall here. Should have a few empty holes that you could use the, uh, the spot to zip tie them in. And then just make sure they're facing up when you do tie them down. The next thing we'll move here is the line going from your intake manifold over to your master cylinder. So we'll go ahead and remove this clamp here. I feel like everyone I know has this on a completely different way. Okay, so this next one's not completely necessary, but I feel like it just makes life easier and gets something else out of the way and uh, gives you better access to the mounting points for the engine hoist. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the white pipe. So first loosen up your lobster claws on either side. After that goes the PCV back here. So go ahead and remove that. Then we have the three bolts that hold the white pipe onto the intake manifold. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And now that those three are out, your white pipe should pop right up. And just go ahead and remove it from the lobster claw here. And then pull it off the one on the other side and your white pipe comes right out. Now this one again depends on your setup. But if you have rear O2 sensors, this is the time where you want to go ahead and disconnect those from the harness. Because those won't come up with the engine. So uh, go ahead and uh, just take your... O2 sensor harness, disconnect the other plug, and you could just lay it back down um, near the rear of the engine. Uh, those O2 sensors aren't coming up. We're actually going to separate the down pipes uh, right where they join the mid pipe. Now we'll go ahead and remove the end piece of the snorkel here. It's usually two Phillips head screws that hold this on. Mine are a little different, so I'll go ahead and remove that. Now we can go ahead and pull the snorkel out of the way. Okay, so now we move over to the other side and we'll start here with the power steering fluid reservoir. So we'll undo the cap, put that off to the side. One thing I do like to do here is I take these uh, big syringe and then just drain this uh, reservoir just to help out with the mess that it creates later. So we'll go ahead and drain that fluid. Now that we have this reservoir drained, we can go ahead and place our cap back on. The reason we removed all the fluent from the power steering reservoir was because we're going to have to remove this lower line here that goes to the power steering cooler. So we'll go ahead and undo that clamp. And once you undo that clamp, you can go ahead and remove that hose. And you can leave the hose hanging there, just tighten up the clamp a bit so that way it doesn't fall off. And there you go. This you can leave hanging there. Again, as long as you removed uh, most of the fluid from the reservoir, you shouldn't have any leakage or any issues there. The next thing we have is our power steering line, which is back here uh, behind where your spider hose would be. This is the hard line that runs to the actual power steering rack. This is very similar to what we did when we were removing the fuel line, except we'll be using a 17 for the smaller side and a 19 for the bigger side. 
the bigger one is the one you're going to be torquing at to loosen. So again, counterclockwise on the 19, the 17 is just there to hold it in place. Now this one might leak a little bit too, just like the fuel line, uh, but it shouldn't be too bad and most of the fluid should have rested towards the bottom. But if you'd like, you can go ahead and uh, just put a towel there so you don't get too much uh, fluid leaking down. Now we'll move on towards the front and the first thing we'll remove here is the headlights. These, depending on how stock your car is, will be held by very different things. Usually it's a 10 mil bolt. In this case, mine is a four mil Allen key, so I'll go ahead and remove those. Also, most cars don't have the third bolt that you get through here. Um, that's pretty much uh, under the headlight adjustment. Uh, if you do, make sure you remove that. That one should be a T25, if I remember correctly. From there on, go ahead and remove your headlight connectors. The one for the turret signal is much easier to remove if you pull the headlight forward a bit. And you can see it here. When you run into these connectors that don't want to let go very easily, you could go ahead and place a flathead screwdriver here twist it a bit you'll hear that click that means the connector let go and you should be able to slide it right off okay so now we move on to the front bumper which has to come off now so in my case my front bumper is going to be uh, very different when it comes to the removal uh, compared to most others I work on my car enough to where quick disconnects are a must for me and it really helps me out in getting the bumper removed easily but if like most you don't have quick disconnects and you have your regular crash bar in you will need to remove your bumper bolts. Your bumper bolts will be running right around here. So you'll need to get in here with a size six Allen um, and remove those two bolts from going from the bottom down. Once you remove those two bolts, you will also have three T25s holding it on here in the back of the wheel well. Once you remove three of those, you can go ahead and start sliding and start sliding your bumper off. So what I mean by sliding is you'll actually slide it forwards your bumper is held on by a sliding mechanism, uh, which is made of plastic here on the side. Uh, so you'll need to slide the bumper forwards before you can go ahead and remove it. In my case, it's just quick disconnect, so I pop them off here. And I'll pop off the one on the other side, and then the bumper will come off. So now what we have to do is remove the three bolts that are holding the shock arm onto the chassis, which is also holding the rad support on here. Now we'll move on to removing the front mount intercooler. Again, this is different for me. If you're running a front mount, this will apply to you. If you're not, we'll remove your intercoolers a bit later on once we get the radiator support out. So just to give you all an idea of what should actually be going on here if your car is um, anywhere near stock. So what you'll have is you'll have your two shock mounts coming out of here on either side and then you'll have your bumper support right here. So these will be uh, three T45s which will most likely be on pretty tight if you've never done this before. So these are one of those bolts where I recommend you go ahead and spray them before you even get started. Uh, definitely spray them with some penetrating fluid, it'll help you remove them much easier. Uh, but that's our next step is to go ahead and remove those three bolts here. It'll be T45s if I remember correctly. And then um, that'll free off your shock mounts and you could pull the shock mounts with the bumper support off completely. Now that you have those six bolts out, the shock mounts should just slide right off. Uh, you can bring it right off and move that over to the side. And what we're going to do next is actually grab your bumper bolts and we're going to insert one of each like this into where the uh, bolts for the rad support were, one on either side. The reason we do this is because these bolts are going to act as our support uh, when we go ahead and slide the front carrier off. And now to remove the carrier, we have to remove the six bolts that are holding it on. So you have two bolts on either side of the fender, which you'll see here, and the two on the other side. And then we actually have a bolt right here on the fenders as well. 
But now we'll go ahead and remove the three on either side to let us slide our carrier out. By the way, the bolts should actually be T30s, not T25s. Now that all those bolts are out, we can go ahead and swing the front carrier forward. So you're actually gonna grab it here and just pull forwards. You'll see the entire carrier move. Do the same thing to the other side here. And like this, you have your engine in what we call service position. Now that the intercooler is out of the way, we'll start working on the AC condenser. First thing we do is remove the plug for the condenser switch here. And then we'll go ahead and remove the two 10 mils on either side that hold the compressor onto the radiator support. Now that the bolts that support it on are out of the way, we can go ahead and remove our compressor. So pull out, then up, and you'll release it from the other side, and then here as well. We can go ahead and swing the condenser out of the way. In this position, we give ourselves plenty of space to do whatever we need with the engine without having to uh, go too far and drain coolant and other things. In this case, we're removing the engine, so our next step is actually to go ahead and remove the lower coolant hose, which is on this side. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now that we have the radiator support loose, we can go ahead and start draining our coolant. And to do that, we're gonna remove this lower coolant pipe here. Uh, this is on the passenger side of the car, near the bottom of the radiator. You're gonna need a screwdriver to remove the clip that's holding it on. Uh, so you can go in there first with the screwdriver. And just pop the metal clip. It'll pop towards the inside of the car. Once you do that, make sure you have a container set up under you here. And you can go ahead and pull this hose out. Once you do, the car will just start pouring coolant out. And that's why you need the container under. Now we're here, right above where we were on the passenger side. Gonna feed the connector for the AC compressor here get that out of the way now we're going to work on removing the upper coolant hose which is now on the driver's side on top and this will be very similar process to what we did on the lower coolant hose so you're going to find the metal clip this one pops up and we're all set there with that upper coolant hose okay so now we grab a larger screwdriver and we're going to use that to pry off the hood latch cable here See that pin that I just pull it off of where it is right there and now we've got our hood latch off and we can move on to removing the rest of the radiator support all right so now that we have all the wiring and hoses disconnected from our radiator support it's time that we remove it uh, so the first thing we'll do is just finish sliding it out completely, and you'll see it's completely free check in here make sure you're not pulling on anything in my case, I have an electric fan kit and you see my wiring here, it's been disconnected so that it's not pulling. And then we go ahead and, while you're holding the radiator, remove those bolts we put in earlier, those bumper support bolts that are we're now supporting the radiator. Off. Make sure that container is still under you. As you can hear, there's probably a bunch of coolant draining. And then tip the support right into that container to get the rest of the coolant out. Okay, so now we have our front end off completely and we can move on to working on removing the drive shaft and the axles, as well as the bolts that are holding on the motor mount and transmission mounts. So let's get started there. All right, so we are under the car now and there's a few things we gotta get done while we're here. So. What we're looking at here is our two down pipes and where they meet with the mid pipes and our wide band sensor here. So what we're gonna do is loosen and remove both of the V bands here so that we can free the mid pipes from the down pipes. And then after that, we're gonna move a little further back and work on the drive shaft. Here you can see the six drive shaft bolts that hold the drive shaft onto the back of the trans flange. And uh, we're gonna be removing all of those as well so that way we can uh, go ahead and free the trans from the rest of the drivetrain. Now that we've moved on to removing the drive shaft, there's a few things that we need going for us before we're able to take it off. 
first of all, you need to jack up one side of the rear of the car so we can get one tire in the air, which will allow us to spin that tire. As you spin the tire here, you see that the drive shaft also spins and we need that to happen so that we can get to those bolts at the top, which we can't access. Now, because this is spinning, it'll make it impossible for you to go in there and put any torque behind any of those bolts to loosen them because the drive shaft will spin. So what you do is when you're ready to remove a bolt, we'll pull the e-brake, which will stop the rear wheels from spinning, allow you to loosen those bolts, release the e-brake, come back out, turn the wheel a bit, and just repeat that process over and over until we get all those bolts out. Also make sure that the opposite wheel gets a chalk so that way your car doesn't roll back when the e-brake is off. Okay, so we got this one bolt out. Now we'll go ahead, repeat the process, get the other five bolts out, and then we're good to go to remove the drive shaft from the transmission. Now, depending on when the last time uh, this flange was removed from the back of the trans, separating uh, the transmission and the drive shaft can be very difficult. Uh, usually, a few shakes like this will get one off. Uh, in this case, you see that, that did not happen. Uh, when that doesn't happen, you can usually get a rubber mallet and just uh, knock on this a few times. So we'll go ahead and grab one and start knocking at it. See if we can get that to drop. All right, there we go. That's separated and we're good to go there. Now we can move on to the axles. So right now we're sitting under the car um, on the passenger side, looking at the axle flange and trans uh, mating here. You can see the bolts we have to remove are right here. These are M10 triple squares, which is what you'll need to remove these. Make sure you don't put a Torx in here. You will strip the bolts and you'll be looking into a much bigger headache. Um, so this is one of the ways to remove these. You could just sit under the car here and um, have a helper go ahead and apply the brake while you're putting torque behind these bolts so that way the axle doesn't spin as you're trying to loosen it. The other way to do it would be to go ahead and remove your wheel. And you can slide a screwdriver or a chisel in the veins of the brake rotor. All right, so we got all the bolts out of this axle. Uh, so we're good to go here. This flange will separate as soon as we put any movement behind the trans. Uh, now here we have an option as well. We are able to remove the engine with the axle still on the car. Uh, so still attached to the wheel hub. It does make it easier to remove it if you do remove the axles. But in this case, we will leave them on and we'll just uh, and we'll make sure to clear the axles with the trans when we're removing everything. Okay, so now we're on the passenger side again. And here we're looking at the motor mount. Uh, that is a 13 millimeter nut here that we're going to have to remove from the stud uh, that's attached to the motor mount. Once you remove that nut, that motor mount is free and won't cause us any issues when we're trying to remove the motor. Now we're going to move a few feet back and we're going to continue with the 14 mil. Um, and we're actually going to remove the transmission mount bolts now. So you have this one and this one here. That center bolt is actually what attaches the mount to the um, mount carrier here for the transmission. So we don't have to touch that center one, but the two 13s on the side do have to come out. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side here. Okay, and now we'll move to the motor mount bolt on this side as well. All right, and now our trans and motor are completely free from the subframe. Okay, so we just have a few more things to do before we go ahead and remove the engine. Number one is to remove the coolant reservoir. So just grab a screwdriver and remove this clamp. Once you have that clamp free, 
that holes would just pop off. So we can go ahead and pull that out. All right, once you got the clamp off, come out here and just pull the hose off of that nipple. All good there. And then below that we have the connector, which we'll have to pull out. And we'll use that same trick from before. Just take the screwdriver, flip it in there, and we could just pull that out along with the rest of the reservoir. Now that that's done, we can move on to the last thing, which is our ECU. So first you'll have to remove the eight millimeter bolts that hold down the cover to the ECU. I already have those removed. And once you do that, you can come ahead, go ahead and just pull the cover off. For this, you have to make sure your battery is disconnected. Uh, we should have done that a while ago, but for this step, again, make sure it is. We'll pull the ECU out here, slide the connectors off on each side, and then your ECU is free. You can set that off to the side. Now that the ECU is free and out of the way, in the back here, you'll see these five multicolored uh, connectors. Um, starting with the white one all the way to the left, you can start pulling those off. You can just pull straight up and they will let loose. After all of those are disconnected, you can come here and pull on the harness there. It'll release this grommet and then pull on the inner one as well. Pull that up and it'll free the entire harness. Once you got that harness free, you can go ahead and just flip it on top of the motor and that'll come out with us. In this case, I have a little bit of a custom wiring here that I'll have to loosen up inside, uh, but this step is pretty much done for us. What we have next up is a little different for me than it is for you. So this part of the harness here is what goes down to the starter and the oil level sensor. What you'll have here is a big uh, plastic uh, shield that is covering and holding this wire and also has clips that go onto the rail to hold it on. In this case, you see my wires are wrapped in heat shielding and uh, they don't have that plastic protector, so I'm holding them onto the rail with zip ties. So I'll go ahead and cut these off, but in your case, what you would be doing is just grabbing that plastic piece and popping it up. The second ground is under the frame on the passenger side, right here, and that's a 13 mil. We'll go in there and release that. And our last thing here is just these few connectors that we have to go ahead and unplug. So all these here, uh, usually what you have is a little plastic bracket that's holding them all together. All those connectors have to be undone at this point. Okay, and then finally, uh, the last step before we can actually start removing the engine is to come into the inside of the car here. And we're going to have to free our shifter linkages uh, so they can come out freely with the transmission. Again, there are a few ways to do this. A lot of people will go ahead and remove the entire shifter box and that'll come out with the transmission. And the benefit to that is that when you install the engine and transmission back into the car, you don't have to worry about aligning the shifter so that it shifts correctly. Um, the way we're gonna do it right now is a little easier now, uh, but does require that step when you're all done of lining up your shifter correctly which can be difficult depending upon the shifter you have. First things first, we gotta come here and remove our shift knob. Then we gotta remove our surround here. So you're just gonna grab right there and pull up. And that'll free it from those clips. And you have to remove your boot. This step will be a little different depending on the setup you have. Um, most people have an aftermarket boot, shifter surround and shift knob. so. The step should be pretty uh, pretty simple. Then we have to remove these two 10 mil bolts. All right. That's one. That's two. And we'll go ahead and pull this out completely. So that that's off. We get to our two bars here. So this is our stabilizer, and then down here is our shifter linkage. So we have to go ahead and remove both of these bolts. We'll start with the stabilizer right here. That'll be a six millimeter. And again, make sure not to lose these. And then we'll move down to the shifter linkage at the bottom there. That'll 
be the same size as six millimeter. When you remove this one, there is a large, uh, I guess, washer, you can call it, that'll come up with the whole assembly. So this silver thing right here, so that all has to come up. Now that we've done that, our shifter will move back here, and both our bars are free to move, so they won't hold us in when we're trying to pull the motor out. Okay, so now we're pretty much all set. The last thing we have to do is figure out how we're going to lift the engine. In this case, we're going to use a nylon strap. You could use the nylon straps, you could use chains or whatever else uh, you deem fit enough to hold the engine. You'll find the first lifting point here on the passenger side of the head near the front. The second point will be on the driver's side near the back. Make sure that when you do lay the strap or the chain, you're not pinching any wires or hoses so that way you don't cause any damage. Also, if you are using a strap, you will need multiple layers uh, just to deal with stretch and other things. So in this case, I will be feeding the strap back through a few times just to make sure we have enough tensile strength to hold everything. All right, so I went around twice and I now have uh, four lengths of strap here in the middle that'll be supporting the engine, the metal hook here, and also uh, the straps going through the mounting point on the back as well. So now I'll go ahead and make a knot here so that the strap does not slide. Make sure you get a pretty good knot and go over it. And that right there is what will be holding up the engine. So now I'm gonna situate myself here within the garage uh, to make sure I have enough space to get the hoist and the engine out without damaging anything. All right, now that we're just about ready to get the engine out, there's just a few more things we have to do before uh, we're all done. First is to remove your heater core hoses from these connections here. I have my heater core bypass because mine is leaking, which is a project for another day. Uh, but in this case, just go ahead and remove those two hoses. They'll be held on um, by that spring style clamp. So just get some channel locks and remove them there. Now that that's done, we're good to start lifting. So we'll go ahead and grab the engine hoist and get that into position. Okay, so now that we have the engine hoist situated and we have enough space uh, cleared behind the car here, we could start lifting. Also, before we continue here, uh, just to clarify something for you. The car is on jack stands right now, lifted to the lowest level on the jack stands. The e-brake is on and we also have a chalk behind the car. All right, so you see there, we have some movement. We'll keep going up. All right, great. Okay, so now we're um, near the bottom of the engine here and we're just peeking through to make sure our motor mounts are off of the subframe. So you see here, this is our driver's side. It's completely off and that stud is not touching. And now we'll scoot over and check out the passenger side. And you can see there as well, that one is cleared and not touching. So we're good to go here. If we wanted to pull the engine forwards, we'd have forward movement. Another thing we're checking here is near the back of the motor. You see, we got a lot closer to the firewall than we were before. And that's because the engine is tilting uh, towards the back because of the weight of the transmission. And we're lifting up front. Uh, so that's something just to stay conscious of. So if you're lifting, don't lift too much to where you'd be crushing anything back here. In this case, we still have a bit of space, so we'll lift a little more. All right, we're just gonna do a couple more pumps here. And right there, we're well clear of everything. So we're actually gonna do our first pull. So we're gonna pull towards us, away from the car. And you see the shifting. One other thing to note here, this is on the driver's side of the engine, we're looking at the AC compressor. So the AC compressor is going to have to come off, or if you do leave it on, you're going to have to um, evacuate your AC system. In this case, I think it'd be easier for us to go ahead and remove the bolts that hold the AC compressor onto the motor. That way we don't have to deal with evacuating the AC system. So to remove the compressor, we're gonna to have to remove the three 13 mil bolts that are holding it on. So the first one is uh, right here. 
which is right next to the upper oil pan by the dipstick. The second one is a little further outside here. And the third is a little harder to see and get to, uh, but it's up there right next, uh, right beyond the motor mount. That's that 13 millimeter bolt. We're gonna remove those three, pull the AC compressor off, and uh, that'll allow us to keep the AC system intact. All right, there goes our first bolt. I'll try to get in there and reach the other two. There goes the second one. All right, there goes bolt number three. Now I moved over here to the passenger side again, and we're removing this little clamp here. This clamp is holding, as you can see here, the two hoses that go over the compressor. So we're gonna remove these. That way these hoses are free when we need them. All right, so I've gone ahead and loosened this coolant hose and um, as well as that elbow that connects these two coolant pipes, uh, just so we have clearance here so we can remove the compressor. Well, now that it's completely free, we can start working it out of here. Compressors out, which means we can uh, keep our refrigerant in the AC system and not have to worry about having it evacuated and having to pay to have someone fill it with refrigerant later. So we'll move this over to the side just like we have our condenser and uh, we're all set to continue pulling the motor. Okay, so now that the compressor is out of the way, we can uh, start jacking up the engine a little more now. Okay, so right now we're looking uh, behind the motor towards the front of the trans here. And uh, what we're aiming for is this. And what we're aiming for is this little clip here. So this is our slave cylinder. That is our slave line. And that clip right there is what holds it in. So we're gonna pop that clip out and then that'll allow us to pull this line out, which will free it uh, from the rest of the car. All right, now that we got that, screwdriver in there we pop that clip out and then we could pull that line right out okay and that'll be leaking brake fluid so just make sure you hold it or cap it off somehow and we're actually gonna grab one of our ziploc bags that we're using for bolts and slide the end of it in there um, and just seal that up so that way we're not leaking brake fluid on everything that stuff is pretty corrosive so what I'm gonna do now is actually head under the car and we're gonna jack the rear of the transmission up a bit to try to level it out. So that way the engine and trans are just about level when we're pulling them out of the car. As you can see there, things started leveling out as we lifted the rear of the trans up. So we can start lifting the motor just a bit more. And right now it's at about that position where we could start pulling the motor away from the car a bit. All right, so right there we cleared our motor mounts and our trans mounts. Okay, the next thing is our heater core hoses. So you see here how they're on the back side of the firewall. We have to feed those through um, the grommet that holds them onto the side and just feed them down so that it gives us enough space to pull forwards. As we pull the engine out, you gotta keep in mind that these will have coolant in them. Um, so it's gonna leak all over your floor, sadly. And um, as you pull, we're gonna keep pushing these down so that they keep uh, clearing until we have them completely out with the motor. So now we'll keep going here. Give it another couple pumps up. And while we do this, we'll also go to the back um, of the trans where the jack is and pump that up as well to keep things level. So that little push right there was just to free up the axle, which was uh, still attached to that flange on the trans. Now that the axle's free and has settled down, 
we should be able to pull the engine forward a little more. All right, and now we'll just jack it up just a bit more. All right, so right there, we're just about out. Uh, just got to jack up the back of the trans a little more so that it clears the subframe and we're pretty much good to go. All right, so just about out here. Finish jacking it up so that we clear the subframe completely. And there we go, engine's removed. All right, so now that we have it completely out, I'm actually gonna place the motor on this pallet and this is where we'll start the breakdown, the separation from the transmission. And in this case, we're actually removing the heads off the motor uh, to install some built 2.8 heads. So I'm gonna lower this down right onto the pallet and then we'll be all done. All right, so we're all done. Engines out and everything went without a hitch. I hope this helped uh, for all of you who are looking to take on bigger projects with your car, be it an engine puller or something smaller or even bigger. Um, I hope the video helped out, gave you a little bit of confidence and showed you that it's completely possible with uh, just regular tools, some jack stands, an engine hoist, and nothing crazy. In my recommendation, I'd like for you to use this video as a working guide. Um, like as a secondary tool to help you through the process while also looking at a write-up or a manual as your main guide. Uh, this would be just something to give you a visual understanding of what's going on, but definitely do your research before you do all of this. Uh, the last thing you need is to break things and get deeper and deeper into the project um, time-wise and also monetarily. Well, anyways, I hope you're all staying safe and I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like. If you loved it, please subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.